Hey y'all, this is Mrs. Carnes, and in this video we're going to talk about section 5.3, the fundamental theorem of calculus, and what does it really mean? So obviously the name, the fundamental theorem, means that it's something pretty important. So the fundamental theorem is basically relates a function and the derivative, or as we've been calling them now, an antiderivative and a function. So if a function is continuous, it's really important that we deal with continuous functions in calculus, on some interval a to b, and then lowercase f of t is equal to the derivative of capital T. So f of t is the function, capital F of t is the function, and lowercase f of t is now the derivative. So it's capital F prime. Okay, so now we're going to use capital for function, lowercase for derivative. Another word you might see is the function is now called the antiderivative. It's the opposite of the derivative, it's the original function. Okay, so that's just some terminology. So the fundamental theorem tells us if you take an integral from a to b of the lowercase, the derivative function, Okay, so what is an integral? An integral is basically the way that you find the area under the curve, right? What is that equal to on the function graph? So on the function graph, the capital graph, that's equal to the function value at B minus the function value at A. So the area under the derivative curve is equal to the change in y values in the original function. Change in y values of original function. So we are going to use the fundamental theorem a lot, so you're going to want to make sure you memorize it. All right, so how does the fundamental theorem work? What can it be used to find? So we over here it says we have let lowercase f of x be the derivative of capital F of x. And this graph is missing a label, but it's actually lowercase f of x. So we'll go ahead and write that in. All right, so they want us to find, they gave us a function value, capital F, and they want us to find capital F of 3. But we have a derivative graph. So we need to set up an integral. We need to set up the fundamental theorem. So the lower x value is always going to be a, and the higher x value is always going to be b. So we're going to do an integral from 0 to 3 because our a is 0 and our b is 3. And it's always the inside function of the integral is always the derivative. So it's lowercase f of x dx. And so we know the fundamental theorem tells us that's going to be equal to capital F at 3 minus capital F at 0. OK, well, when we have a graph, how do we solve an integral? We just find the area under the curve between 0 and 3. So between 0 and 3, it's just this little triangle here. What's the area of that triangle? So it's 1 half times 3 times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So it's half of 15. Half of 15 is 7.5. So that area is 7.5. Now, we're trying to find f of 3. We don't know what f of 3 is, but they did tell us that f of 0 is 0. So I'm going to replace f of 0 with 0. And so basically, I know that f of 3 is 7.5. OK, so let's try another one. So here, they're telling me that capital F of 4 is 10, and they want me to find capital F of 0. So again, when you look at your insides, a is always the smaller one, b is always the bigger one. So a is going to be 0, b is going to be 4. So we're going to set up an integral from 0 to 4 of the lowercase function of the derivative function. Basically, whatever function you have the graph of is what goes inside your integral. And that equals the original function, so the capital function at the top value, so at b, minus the capital function at 0. OK, so we're going to use the graph to get area. Well, we already know that 0 to 3 was 7.5. Plus, we just need to add in from 3 to 4, and that's another 5. Okay. And then we don't, we know that f of 4 is 10, 
So we have 10 minus, and we're solving for f of 0. All right, so 7.5 plus 12 is 12.5 equals 10 minus f of 0. And then it's just a pretty simple solving. So I'm going to subtract 10. So I get 2.5 equals negative f of 0. And so I just need to multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay, so let's try the next one. Suppose f of capital two, capital F of negative two is four, and capital F of ten is thirty. So they're giving us both capital values. So we know that a is going to be negative two and b is going to be ten. So we can go ahead and just set that up: f of ten minus f of negative two. And you know that's going to be thirty minus four. That has to equal the integral basically that we're trying to solve here because it's going from negative 2 to 10 of f of x dx. We don't even need to use the graph to do the area and I don't think we can. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. We can't even use the graph because this graph only goes out to 8. So we can have both function values though so we know that this integral has to be equal to 26. All right, so I want you to go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the three U tries on the bottom. Unpause the video when you're finished, and I will give you the answers. All right, so check your answers. If you have questions, bring them to class. On the next page, let's look at example two. So now we're going to look at the fundamental theorem with a function instead of a graph. Still going to work the same way. So we have lowercase f of x equals e to the x times sine x. And then we want to find things out about capital. So remember, the integral from a to b of lowercase f of x dx, the derivative function, is equal to capital F of b minus capital F of a. Okay, so if I have a 0 and a 2, 0 is going to be my a, 2 is going to be my b. So I'm going to do an integral from 0 to 2 of the lowercase function f of x dx. And that has to equal capital F of 2 minus capital F of 0. Okay, well since they gave me a function, I'm going to plug that in for f of x. So I'm really doing the integral from 0 to 2 of e to the x times sine x dx. Okay, and so I don't know f of 2, but I know that f of 0 is 0, so I'm just subtracting a 0. So we've talked about how to solve integrals in your calculator. So go ahead and open up a calculator screen. Remember, we can find integrals under menu, calculus, integral is number 3, and you're just going to type it in exactly like it looks on, its pa on your paper. Just be careful, anytime you have a trig function, you've got to be in radians, and you can look right up here in the corner, I'm in radians. Do not do it in degrees. That's a common mistake people make, and then you get the wrong integral answer. All right, so this integral, I gave, got a really crazy answer. The cast will do that, but if you hit Control Enter, just convert it to a decimal. So this is always use, always use three places unless we tell you otherwise in calculus. So it's 5.397 equals f of 2, because we're just subtracting 0 in this case. So we know that the original function at 2 has a value of 5.397, even though we don't even know what the original function is. That's the nice thing about the fundamental theorem. Okay, so let's do b. They have f of 4 and f of 0. So 4 is going to be our b, 0 is going to be our a. So we're going to do an integral from 0 to 4 of the lowercase function has to equal capital F at 4 minus capital F at 2, at 0, sorry. Okay, so again, replace the f of x with the actual equation. We know that f of 4 is negative 2, so we're going to plug the negative 2 in there. Okay, so again, we're going to type this in our calculator. And actually, I can just use the one I already have and just change the endpoints. So I want to just go... Zero to four. 
again, get a crazy answer, hit control enter. Okay, so that gives me negative 2.316 equals negative 2 minus f of 0, and then I'm just going to solve for f of 0. So I'm going to add 2. Okay, so that just gives me negative 0.316 equals negative f of 0. So if I multiply both sides by negative 1, I get f of 0 is 0 0.316. Okay, so go ahead, pause the video, and try the next few tries. When you're done, unpause the video, and I'll give you the answers. Okay, so how do you find the units of the definite integral? So you gotta really think about working backwards from a derivative. A derivative is something per something, feet per second, miles per hour, uh, something along those lines. So if we're working backwards from the derivative to get back to the original function, you're gonna multiply the units of the derivative, which is now lowercase, f of x, so multiply the units of the derivative, lowercase f of x, by the units of x. I mean, basically, if you think about it, if the derivative is in feet per second, then the original function had to be measured in feet. And so multiplying feet by, per second by seconds cancels out the seconds, and you're left with feet, which is exactly what we're doing here. If the derivative is in feet per minute, then basically you just cancel out the per part and the original function had to be in feet. Okay. Let capital F of T represent bacteria, which is five million at time zero. So we know that capital F of zero is five million. I'm just gonna write this in terms of millions. After T hours, the population is growing at an instantaneous rate. Instantaneous rate is another way of saying derivative. So lowercase f of t is 2 to the t bacteria per hour. Estimate the total increase in the ba uh, bacteria population during the first hours and the population at time 1. Okay, so the total increase in bacteria population, that's the change in the population that in the first hour. So that's f of 1 minus f of 0. And so remember from the fundamental theorem, that equals the integral from zero to one of the derivative. The derivative is two to the t, dt. So we can just put this right in our calculator. What is the integral from zero to one of two to the t? You can actually use t when you're typing in integrals. You can do two to the t. You just gotta make sure you do a dt on the end. Okay, so when you get a weird answer again, just turn it to a decimal. So the change in population is 1.44 million. So that means in the first, what is T? T is hours, so in the first hour, the bacteria grew by 1.44 million, which is kind of gross, that's a lot of bacteria. Okay, so then it wants us to find what is the population at time one. So to figure out the population at time one, we gotta get F of one by itself. So we know that f of zero is five, so I'm gonna replace f of zero with five, and we know that the integral equals 1.44. So if we solve for f of one, the population at hour one must be 5.44, then you should, oops, sorry, 6.44 million. Make sure you tack that million on there. All right, next page, example five. All right, so below is a graph of the rate. So this is a derivative graph. Rate means derivative in arrivals per hour. The per should definitely give that away. At which patrons arrive at a theater to get rush seats for an evening performance. The first people arrive at 8 a.m. and the ticket window opens at 9 a.m. Suppose that once the window's open, people can be served at a rate of 200 per hour. So we're gonna use the graph to provide an estimate of the length of the line at 9 a.m. Okay, so let's think about this. At 8 a.m., I'm just gonna kind of write a little table over here. At 8 a.m., nobody's in line, right? Because people are just showing up. So between eight and nine, how many people show up? So we look at the, the derivative graph. If we need to go back to number of people, we need to figure out the area under the curve. So we need to kind of estimate this area right here. And you can just kind of do that estimating blocks. Like this piece looks like it would almost fill in this piece. 
So it looks like you're getting 100 people per block because this is a width of a height of 100 and a width of one. So one times 100. So this is, let's say this is roughly 100 and maybe 60 people come for the first hour. So between 0 and 9 a.m., 160 people show up. However, we lose 200 people per hour. So what's happening at 9 a.m.? Well, the window doesn't open till 9 a.m. though. So between is 8 and 9, 160 people get in line, okay? Then the window opens at 9 a.m. and let's see how many people are in line. So we're guessing there's approximately 160 at 9 a.m. So what's gonna happen? How many people are gonna be in line at 10? So how many people, what, how much area do you think this is? So we have 100, 100, I don't know, that's slightly less than 50, let's just call that 40. So let's say 200 people, 240 people get in line between 9 and 10. But, so we're adding 240, however, between 9 and 10, though the window is open, we're going to lose 200 people per hour because they're going to get served and they're going to go home. They're going to buy their tickets and they're going to leave. So we're losing 200. So how many are going to be left in line? So we had 160 plus 240. So what's that, 400, we're losing 200, so we're gonna be left with approximately 200 people in line around 10 a.m. So we have to take into account how many people are getting in line, but also how many people are leaving the line, okay? So let's keep going. What about 11 a.m.? So between 11 and 12, this area, we got 100 here. Uh, I think these two areas together, I don't know, slightly less than 100, let's just call it 90. So let's say we're adding 190, but again, we're losing 200. So that one's kind of nice. We're losing 200, so we're adding 190, so we're left with 190 at 11 a.m. So we think we have 190 people. Notice I'm just approximating from the graph. This is not an exact science. Your answers may be different than mine. You might think the areas are a little different, and that's okay. Okay, so what's happening at 12? Let's we'll just keep going and fill in the chart. Oop, 12 p.m. Okay, so between 11 and 12, it looks like we're definitely under 100 people. I don't know, I'm just gonna say 70. So I'm adding 70, but I'm losing 200 still. So 190 plus 70 is 260, so I'm gonna have about 60 people left in line, okay? So then between 12 and one, I don't know, let's just say that's 20. So we're gonna add 20 people, but lose 200. So basically, what does that mean? We only got 80 people in line, but we can serve up to 200. So that means nobody's gonna be in line at 1 p.m. And then between one and two, again, we're gonna lose 200 people, and we're only gonna add maybe 10. So again, at 2 p.m., nobody's in line. So by 1 p.m., the line should have disappeared. Okay, so D wants to know what's the rate at which the line is growing at 10 a.m. So rate is derivative. This is the derivative graph. So if we just go to 10 a.m., what is the derivative value at 10 a.m.? And you're just gonna estimate that off the chart. I don't know, I'm gonna say that's approximately 225. So 225 people per hour. When is the line going to be at a maximum? When are we gonna have the most people in line? So you can tell just by looking at our chart, it's happening somewhere around 10 a.m. So it's gonna happen between 10 and 11. And that's all we can really narrow it down to. We don't really know because we don't have the actual function. So when a person arrives at 9 a.m., how long are they gonna stand in line? Well, it's gonna be less than an hour because if you're the 161st person in the line, they're serving them 200 per hour it's obviously going to be less than an hour. So if you think you're the 161st person out of 200, that's approximately 0.8. That's around 50 minutes in line. 0.8 of an hour, so around 50 minutes. When does the line disappear? Well, we already found that. It's around 1 p.m. Probably somewhere between 12 and 1, not necessarily exactly 1 p.m. 
Now suppose we actually had an equation for r. How could we answer these above questions differently? So if we actually knew what r was, we could use the fundamental theorem and actually solve it in the calculator using the integrals and we, we would get exact values instead of approximations, which would be nice, but we don't know it, so we can't do it. All right, last page. So the definite integral can also be used to find the average value of a function, okay? As well as finding an area under a curve. So the way you make it an average value, just think about any average. So average value of f of x, okay? So it's the same function as you use the integral. So you're gonna set up your integral from a to b of lowercase f of x dx. So it's the average value of the actual derivative function. How do you make an average? You divide by the number of things. And so in this case, the number of things is the difference between A and B. Just think about the number of rectangles as you go from A to B. How far apart are they? So uh, the difference between them would be B minus A. So it's basically the integral divided by B minus A. You'll also see it written with 1 over B minus A in front of the integral. I always think of it as a division because average is a division. Add things up. Remember an integral sign is really a summation. It adds up all the rectangles. Divide by the number of things. The number of things is B minus A. So we have a population in Mexico, and here's our population equation, and it wants us to find the average population. So it wants us to find the average of this equation from 2000 to 2020. But now it says the starting year is 1980. So if the starting year is 1980, 2000 is 20 years later, so that's going to be A, and B is 40 years later, so that's going to be B. So our average value, we would go 20, to 40 of the function that they gave us dt divided by 40 minus 20. And if you type that in the calculator, you should get 147.1. And now it said our equation was in millions, so this is actually in millions too. All right, so in number seven, they want us to work backwards a little bit. They're telling us the average value is 12. So this whole thing equals 12 when we set up our division. And they want us to find the integral. So we don't know what the integral is, but that goes on the top. We don't know what f of x is, so we can't do anything in the calculator. But on the bottom, we're gonna do b minus a. So basically, I get 12 equals the integral from negative two to four of f of x dx over six. And just think of this as solving any equation. I want to get the integral part by itself. Just think of that as being a giant x. How would you solve a proportion for x? You would just cross multiply. 12 times 6 is 72. 1 times the integral is just the integral. So the integral has to equal 72.